So, um, I just want to start by asking how many of you guys are familiar with 3D printing or consider yourself, you know, have at least used it before? Okay, uh, I would guess like maybe a third of you guys. Okay, so today's talk for the more experienced guys, um, I'm going to share with you guys my findings on like what I found after experimenting with press fit parts. And for those who have no idea what 3D printing is about, just take this talk as a way to appreciate the limitations of the technology, okay? So yeah, I conduct, over the past few weeks I've been conducting experiments with press fit parts and the reason why I did that is because I found this article uh, on Make Magazine uh, where the author mentioned how a round peg may be the last thing you want for an easy, predictable, first try fit into a round hole. So that's very interesting because if you see those kid toys where they have the round hole and the round thing, you, you expect a round peg supposed to fit in a round hole fairly easily. But in 3D printing's case, um, a guy had to write an article to design, uh, create a basic toolbox of design ideas that will help you make press fit pins that fit the first time every time. Why is that so? Because in a round peg round hole for 3D printing, any variation in design dimensions or printing conditions can, can make you guess what's the uh, right clearance between the pin and the hole. So what this means is that if you 3D print a 1cm diameter hole, uh, printing a 1cm diameter pin, round pin, to fit in won't work. It usually won't work. And that's very tedious. Um, you need to make a, like, a smaller pin, and even then if you make a slightly smaller pin, that tolerance difference, that difference between the pin and the hole, will change if you make a bigger pin and a bigger hole. So it's a lot of trial and error every time you want to do a press fit part. So the offer Kurt Hamel, I can put a link after hardware, uh, hardware, created alternative print designs, pack designs, to hopefully create a pack where if you have a one centimeter hole, you create a one centimeter pack in your CAD file and you don't have to think too much about it, right? Um, his findings uh, concluded that the bottom right octagon with the hole was the best fit. So I thought it was interesting because I tried try to 3D print press fit parts all the time and I most of the time have to have a file on standby. I thought maybe we could try out like the various designs he went through and see whether it's really conclusively uh, a thing that this octagon with whole thing really works for press fit parts no matter the diameter. So uh, with my highly unscientific test, I created three criteria that I'm going to assess all these designs for. Uh, I assess the print time, the material use and the, how snug the fit is. Uh, in my own way for each of the designs. So print time and material use was fairly straightforward. For those of you who know 3D printing, you probably are familiar with this software called Cura. And all you have to do is put your CAD file inside this software and it will tell you the print time and materials just like that. So that's the easy part. I just did a bit of data entry on that. Um, the harder part was measuring how well the fit was. So I had no tools to measure the force, so I based it on my gut. And I gave, I created this so-called arbitrary scoring system where on the positive side, if you have a positive tree that's the highest score, it's too tight, your peg is too big at zero tolerance and it can't go through the hole. On the negative side, negative tree, if it's, it's too smooth, uh, too loose and it will just slot straight through, right? And of course zero is what I deem in my own subjective opinion to be the best possible fit. Uh, so that's really the best I could do, but you know, let's just see what happened. I also printed all the pegs in both PLA and ABS uh, just to see the difference on how these two materials uh, affect the pegs that are printed out. And I tried it across three different dimensions, 1 cm, 1.2 and 1.4 cm for both PLA and ABS. So let's just start out by uh, talking about the classic round peg. How does it stack up if you print at zero tolerance? So what I did is I found that out of all the designs, it generally prints the fastest. It uses the least amount of material out of those eight designs you saw. And as expected, at zero tolerance, it's a tight fit, right? Um, I drew graphs. I plotted the graphs using Excel. And I compared across, uh, I don't know whether you can see, but in the x-axis is each individual uh, diameter of the hole. So 1 cm, 1.2, 1.4. And the left side axis is how long the thing takes to print. So this red line, sorry? That's in minutes. In minutes, in minutes, okay? So this red line over here is what the round pack is compared to the rest. So you can see it's on the faster, uh, faster uh, side of things. Uh, in terms of amount of material use, it's the least amount of material use in terms of meters. So it's the same axis, one centimeter, 1.2, 1.4. And on this side, it's the number of meters of filament used for each pack at each diameter. So 
round pegs use the least material compared to the rest. Okay, so we have a starting point for analysis. For my arbitrary fit scale, um, I did the same thing. So you have uh, the scale from zero to three here, and it starts from zero to three here because uh, at zero tolerance, it's just too tight. It's generally too tight. Uh, I have this arbitrary outlier 1.2 fit, which had a perfect fit for some reason. Uh, at ABS, I have the packs here actually. So if you guys disagree with any of my results, feel free to try out on what I printed and tell them for me. Tell me how snug you think the print is. So at least this confirms the general belief that it's very tight at zero tolerance. So we all have this understanding of the classic round pack, and I'm going to talk a bit more about each individual pack design in the same way. So let's move into this, what I call the center hole pack, because there is a hole in the center of the pack. Um, you see this the, uh, pack design a lot in Thingiverse, where people make press fit parts. It's actually fairly common. And for good reason, actually, I'll just skip this and just go straight into the graph. It prints fairly quickly of all the designs. And what's interesting is that, and, and it's a good learning point about tree printing, is that it takes a moderate amount of material, even though if you look at the design, it seems to take up less volume than a traditional round pack, right? So this is a, I just want to sidetrack a bit to bring in this insight on like, how is it that a pack that of smaller volume ends up taking longer to, sorry, more material to print than one of less volume. And it's really down to uh, the slicing of the pack. So let's just, so this is how I printed all my packs, right? I lie them up flat on the bit like this to maximize their strength. And let's just get the, where's the foul? How do I get the foul? Can uh, you help me out here? How do I get my hackware folder? Okay, yeah. What's this? Uh, you get my hackware folder. Is this chrome? This chrome. Yeah. yeah. I also want to drag and okay, drop my folder okay. inside. Your yeah, folder is. Yeah, this one, this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, let's just pull in the. the one, what was it called? The center cut. This one. Okay, so I pull this in. Right? Oop. Is this the one? Nope, not this one. Okay, let's pull in the other one. Cross, cross. Yeah. This one, okay. So this is just uh, an interesting thing I found. Uh, if we put it down here, and let's just expand this out a bit. Uh, okay. So if you look at the layers, what's it? A reason why it takes longer compared to say uh, this print over there is because uh, let's look it down here. Move it, like mouse here. Right. The infill down here in the in the, the print on the full circle, right, is actually using less material to print when you compare it to building up the other part over here, right? For some reason, the wall surrounding actually takes up slightly more material. When you don't print an infill, it actually takes some more material. So is this very curious thing of right? Because of the way it's designed, even though it takes up less volume, you use up more material to create the, the part, right? So it's just an interesting thing I found about 3D printing that it's not so straightforward where you just look at the shape and think, oh, okay, a larger part means it takes longer. That's not necessarily the case. So let's just go back into this, okay. So that's what I found for this print. And of course, the most important part is the fit, right? So in my own subjective opinion, this is a market improvement over the round pack at zero tolerance because of the way the, there's a hole in the center, you can push the sides of that hole pack into the hole much easier at zero tolerance. So I get a generally good fit. You see it hovers around like one to zero, negative 0 0.5 over here. So it's generally good for me at zero tolerance. So I can see why a lot of people print this if they want a press fit part. Um, so let's just move forward if you have no questions. The, I'm, I'm trying out this base hole pack and it's interesting because this takes even more print time than the previous two. And the amount of material used is also like the third largest amount of material out of all the eight designs. So it goes back into, if you, you want to find out why, you can just uh, bring this, uh, where is it? 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 I don't know how to use this. Ah, uh, this one. Okay. Yeah. So if we bring this back into Cura, you can find out why. Okay. In a nutshell, it's just mostly, mostly because of the designer. Right. Yeah, if we put it into the layer view, 
In this case, if you notice down around here, this is where the excess material comes about, right? Um, there's much less infill, these hexagons in the center of the print, there's much less because of the fact that the machine has to compensate by creating some kind of support at the center hole of the bridge here. And that's why it creates so-called more material requirement to print even though it uses less volume than the circle print. So you see this uh, kind of uh, idiosyncrasies in, while I was doing this test, which I found was quite cool, interesting. So please cut uh, your service provider some slack if they can't tell you upfront based on the look of the print how long it will take because you literally cannot tell until you try it out yourself. Okay, uh, where, uh, where is it? Here. Okay. So that's what I found for this one and for the fit wise, it is loose. Um, I actually don't know why. Uh, if anyone has any theories, please let me know or later we can try out the print the, and you fit out yourself, you can let me know why. And yeah, so, so those are the results I got for the rounder pack designs. Moving on to the more unusual one, like the rectangle pack, um, it generally prints fairly quickly. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward design, so rectangle printer. Rectangle is fairly straightforward for a 3D printer. But you can see one interesting thing is that even though it's a fairly thin design, you see down here, it actually, the amount of time taken to print increases a lot as the diameter increases. And the reason that is because of the concept of support structures. If you want to print something like this, I need to close this again. You want to print something like this, the support structures that are generated take up a lot of the material, even though it prints faster. So this is, a, this is another interesting thing, right? So the, the first uh, assumption is that uh, the more material you use, the faster, the, the slower it will print. But that's not really the case. Here you have an example of a print that actually uh, takes faster to print than um, items that use less material simply because of the support structure inside the print. So it's just another thing where you realize you really cannot take for granted based on how something looks, how it will print, uh, turn out in the print. You really have to run it through software like this. Ah, uh, there's no, no support here. Why no support here? Uh, ah, here we go. Okay. See, ah, uh, there you go. So you have to generate all these, these green color things when you print this, right? So another, another instance of realizing how seemingly random the amount of material use and print time affects the print. And of course, we're talking about fit here for press fit parts as well. Uh, it's generally bad. I, if you see down here, they're all hovering at three. I had a tough time printing at zero tolerance, fitting at zero tolerance. And the curious thing is that when I print it at ABS, it's loose. So it's either too tight or too loose, it just doesn't fit. So don't print a rectangular pack and try it out because, at least in my experience, it's a waste of time. And another unusual design is the rib pack design. This, this took really long to design in CAD, by the way. So that's one reason why I wouldn't use it. The second reason is that despite a relatively quick print time, a relatively small amount of material used, uh, it's generally too loose. You can try it out later for yourself. It slides straight through the hole. And my theory is because uh, if you notice these little ridges at the end, they are very, very small. This is the only contact point between your hole and the pad. And when you push it through a hole, it rubs off the plastic at these tips. And that causes your pad to become instantly smaller than what you printed it out. And after one or two fits, it just slides straight through. Don't believe me, you can try it out for yourself later. So, conclusion, don't print this. This doesn't work as well, uh, even though the author has tried it. Um, yeah, this, this won't work and it takes too long to design. So the, the other unusual one is the cross pack. I'll just very quickly go through this one. It takes a fair bit of time to print and it takes a fair amount of material to print. I won't go into the details because of lack of time, but what I do want to highlight is that I could not get this thing to fit at all. Okay, so, so far the three round, like, unconventional ones, the rib and the rectangle and the cross, totally don't fit. So don't try. At least based on my experience, I will never try them again. And so we'll, let's zoom in on the octagon that the author tried. They print fairly quickly. You can see it takes the fastest print time, even faster than a circular pack to print. Um, uses a fair amount of material. And with regards to a PLA, the blue squares are PLA, fits very well. But once I use ABS, for some reason, I think it's the shrinkage of the ABS after you print, 
the, the print is very loose. It slides straight through. And for the pack with the hole, I get the same results. PLA fits is very good, but ABS, it just slides straight through, right? So the author might be using PLA when he was saying that, you know, this is a good fit. But I cannot dispute the fact that it is really a, probably the best fit in PLA for Octagon. So that leads to my conclusion, which uh, is basically I'm very confused. <laughs> Like, okay, first thing is the test I conducted is not conclusive. I only did like one print of each, used my subjective opinion to do a fit, and ideally you want to print like a hundred of these, right? Um, well, I can say that this, this pack, this center hole pack is very good. Yeah, I have validated that. Uh, it still remains to be seen whether the rest of the ones, especially the ones which I felt were not useful, were really because of the design, or was it more because my printer settings were off, or you know, the printer I was using was bad. So I don't know. Right, more, data, more studies have to be conducted. Um, so I would just like to round off this discussion by saying that I have a friend who 3D printed round packs and he told me that even with the same printer, if you print 10 of them, all of them will give you different measurements after you print them. So I hope those who don't do 3D printing can understand this. Um, it's a fairly random and tedious process as of now. So if you want to do 3D printing, please bear with the printer when you get one. Uh, thank you. Thanks for that scientific experiment of going through the eight different types.